Welcome back. In this lab walkthrough, we're going to take a little look at domain management. Now, we've already discussed domain management in previous lessons. And just as a reminder, domain management gives you the ability to specify internal domains so that when you're using the VA, for instance, the internal requests to internal domains or RFC 1918 addresses are routed to your local DNS server as opposed to routed to Cisco Umbrella. So we're going to take a little look at how that works now. And you may recall when we did the installation and configuration of the VA, we saw that the internal domains were pushed down from Umbrella once configured and we could see everything that was applicable and was going to be routed to our local DNS server. So on the Umbrella side, if we log in and we navigate to deployment and then down under configuration, you can see domain management. When we click on that, now you can see we have something called internal domains. And what you can see here is we've got the default ones that are specified and grayed out. So we can't edit these or change these, but you can see we've got 1980, RFC 1918, so uh, non-routable private IP address spaces. And then we've got our .local, so for the default local domain, if you like. And then we've got our 10 dot space as well. Now you can see I've got an extra one added here and we can see, I'll give it a description, lab environment, and it's applicable to all devices and all sites. And you can see that that domain is networkwithkid.com. So this is a domain that I'm using internally. So theoretically when a user requests to reach anything on that domain, so that networkwiskid.com domain, the VA is going to see that and then route that to the local DNS server. And we can actually test this now and make sure that this is exactly what it's going to do by actually typing in networkwiskid dot com and this is going to fail because i have not got a web server set up with networkwizkid.com internally so this will fail as you can see nothing's happening the other thing to take note of is that if we were to navigate to our reports and activity search because that's rooted to our local DNS server, we're not going to get the logs in our dashboard here. And we can just verify that by actually searching against the IP address of the machine that we're using. So 101.117. And as you can see here, we don't have any requests for the destination going to networkwhiskey.com because that's passed on to our local DNS server, which is not going to return anything. So as you can see here, this actually fails as expected. Now, if I was just to close that and let's just go back to our deployments, domain management, and let's look at getting rid of this so we can actually remove this but before we do this let's just have a quick look at the VA just to show you where we can actually see the this sort of information uh, which is passed passed to the VA so with access to the CLI of our VA if I just do config local DNS show we can actually see the same information on our VA. So we can see our local DNS server, which we configured in a previous lesson. And then we can, all, we, we can also see the RFC 1918 addresses that are also configured here. And lastly, we can, if I just expand that a little bit, 
maybe and just run that again just so that you can actually see and you can also see that we've got our local and networkwhiskey.com and you can also see that they're forwarded to our local DNS server so we've got conditional forward in there so now let's as I say let's go back now and let's remove this networkwhiskey.com so we'll delete that from there and now you can see we have no custom internal domains now configured so once that's updated on the VA we should then be able to actually navigate to networkwhiskey.com so let's just go back to our VA now and we can still see that networkwhiskid.com in there so we'll just give that a few minutes to update and then once it's done we can give that another test all right so it's taken about four to five minutes for that to update but as you can see now networkwhiskid.com where it was being conditionally forwarded here a quick refresh shows now that that has been removed so theoretically we should be able to test access now to networkwhiskid.com and that access should work because it's also a public domain as well and we should also be able to see that in the logs so if we just go to networkwizkid.com we can see there that networkwizkid.com successfully loads as well which is great so let's just go back to our umbrella and let's go to our reporting again and then activity search and let's just filter on that machine again and if we scroll down we can see here networkwizkid.com is allowed so there you have it that's how we can use domain management to configure custom internal domains and IP spaces if and where required.